this up. A Crossman 600 semi-automatic pistol. I'll be honest, my wife, she doesn't uh, care about watching any of my videos or anything. I'm not afraid to say it. This price on here, somebody at some point in time paid $27.50 for it. You could add a zero to that, and that's about what I paid for it. She might have assumed that this was sent to me by Crosman to do a testing on and a review like I do with a lot of other gadgets and stuff that I get. The problem is uh, this specific gun was made in 1964. Yeah. It's in extremely good shape. Comes with uh, just a brochure of repair service stations. The actual user guide I would say. Quite happy with it. This thing is in just phenomenal shape for being, what, 54 years old. They've made this gun from 1960 to 1970. They quit making it. Basically, I think Crosby sold out to another company. They ended up discontinuing this on account of it was not profitable. This is original bag come with. It's got a ramrod here, basically to, if I can get it out, put in a barrel to make sure your, your gun is empty. It's only a couple small scratches right there that's about it but these things are extremely well made and sought after semi-automatic 22 caliber 10 shot co2 powered pistol the heft on this is video you can't do justice just by showing it so i want to show you real quick what this weighs compared to a typical BB gun pistol. Starters, I got a nice heavy Euromax blowback pistol. I got a CO2 in there and a light attached to it. Total weight, and this has quite a bit of metal in it. One pound, 12 ounces. And this is all metal. It's a very, very rugged, neat shooting pistol. Now here's a typical spring powered Daisy BB gun you can buy at Walmart. 11.9 ounces. Let's get the 600 out without a CO2 in it. Two pounds, 10 ounces. I mean, this thing's close to three pounds. Again, the Euromax, awesome heavyweight. It's almost half the weight. Now, I bought this not as an investment for, I bought it for my son, six year old, so someday he'd enjoy one. Cause I do believe with this gun being, like I said, 54 years old, they're gonna be harder and harder to come by. Someday my kid will thank me for picking this thing up. One reason why I'm putting this video up is I want to show you, one, I'm going to show you how you load these and everything else, but this gun has a leak. Being as the seals are 54 years old, I doubt anybody's worked on it. It does burn through the CO2s, and I'll show you it leaking. I want to get a crony results on a per second on it, and what I'm going to end up doing, there's a gentleman that lives in South Carolina, by the name of Henry Ford that's got an actual website but he specializes in rebuilding these things and does a real good job he even uh, hot mods them and I'm gonna send this to him after I get the crony results and have him go through it get it so it doesn't leak run his magic through it and then I'm gonna finish up crony results on it add that into the video and then throw this video up with that said I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera set up and we're gonna get up by my chronograph get this thing loaded we'll see what happens I want to want to make sure my crony's working because I'm not gonna get much options redoing that. I'm going to run it to my phone and then we can download the results later when I do get the gun back. First off, I want to see if this thing's working. That one worked. It said 363. 364. 362. So this is shooting uh, 177 BBs out. 360 some feet a second. Pretty good. Alright, I think I'm ready to get this thing loaded up. Now number one, what it says in the manual is you pull it back your feeder spring to make sure and dump all your pellets out through here. And you'll check, you can look right down in this port to see if in this uh, feeder arm, if there's a pellet stuck in there. And if there is, you can push it back out and drop that out. So once you got that out, you say to take that supplied ramrod, and you're not gonna be able to see it, check to see if you got a pellet in the chamber. Once that's done, run that forward, long as you know it's all your gas is, is spent, you want to 
basically cock it and push that forward and then put your CO2 in, seal it up, then load it up and you're ready to go. Now this one is, like I said, made in 1964, the end of it. I do believe 1962, about the middle of 64, the original Crossman, they had the piercing pin on this side and you put your CO2 in with the neck facing out. And once you screw that in, you pierce it and then you back it off a little bit and that charged it. Now from the end of 64 to I believe 68, put your CO2 in neck first and that's hollow. You can see the end of it, cradles it, and then you charge it that way. Then from 68 to 70, they actually got a pin you pop on it. So this is the second generation. They had three basically variants and this would be the second variant on that. Now being as it leaks, I'm going to load it up first and then pressurize it and we're going to hurry up and rattle off some shots. And for the entire testing, I'm going to be using some Crosman Pr Premier hollow points. These are 14 threes. We'll do the before and after with these. Basically just putting them in. Pulled that spring back. Got four in there. Five, six. I don't expect to be able to shoot all these out on account of how bad it was leaking. We'll do seven. I already got it cocked. I started the crony. I'm gonna try to show you how bad this thing leaks, but I'll be doing a lot of things at once here, so I'm gonna have to rattle one off right away. Hopefully kill heck all this works. See, you can hear it leaking. All right, that didn't work. All right, I'm gonna have to take it apart. All right, had to completely unload the damn thing. We're gonna try this again. I'm gonna have to probably move along a little faster this time. That didn't work so well. First shot was 261 feet a second, and I'm already out. I'm gonna try that one more time again. All right, reset the chronograph. Got four, I do believe, in here. We're gonna try to fly through this one. I got everything ready. Chronograph's ready to go. 336, 335, 330, 323. Kinda of sucks, I should've put more in. That one worked a little better. I got a good, uh, good group there. Listen to that thing leak. So, gotta get it emptied out. Basically what I got is a pellet jammed in there now. I'm gonna cock it. I'm gonna put it on safe. I just wanna see if something's in that barrel. Nothing's in there. Let's try shooting it one last time, just see. 321. 316. We're losing her. Now, with it leaking like that, you never want to unscrew this end. One, you wouldn't be able to. It's too high a compression. From what I've read, you want to keep firing it or just leave it in there. It's leaking pretty good. But out. There we go. Now the end comes off good. So, I'm going to shut the video off. I'm going to send this out. He figures three weeks to a month we're going to get it back. We're going to do some testing on it. Let's look at that crony quick. Got our saved groups. Here's the first one. Looking at first time was only averaging 227 feet a second. The second one, we're going to go with that one. Average 326 feet a second. That's about, I do believe max these were running about, were about 340. So a little over, the best shot was 336. And after waiting on shot six for a little bit, it was down to 316. So... Let's get the gun sent out. Okay, I've got this back from Henry Ford's Air Guns, and he worked his magic on it. And we're gonna mimic our test with a chronograph. And he did, uh, well actually I purchased it from him, a 12 inch barrel, and we're gonna be putting that on there. And 
see what we get for feet per second, but we'll be using the same Crosman's. He sent this basically with another CO2 in it, and I did run shots through and empty it out, so I'm gonna go ahead and put one in. It's been sitting over a week with that same CO2 in it, never leaked out, so. He didn't really tell me what all he d did with this. Actually, I asked him if I could uh, find out, and he said, just uh, letting you know, I work my magic. So let's see how much uh, magic he does to this thing. And then we're gonna compare before and after. So, so we'll go ahead and remove the spent CO2 that I ran all the rounds out through and put another one in. Now, I know this is empty. On this, these guns, I do believe you cock it and leave this uh, back. Put the CO2 in until you hear the air go in through it and seals up. Let's dry fire once. This thing's loud. Put the safe on and we're going to load her up with 14-3 cross. Okay, I do believe the crony is ready. Everything's good to go on the Crossman 600, roughly three feet away. Tell you what, I'm gonna pluck one shot through with uh, my boy's Red Rider. You notice, no leaking. So that's a real good sign. Damn, that thing is loud. 429 feet. No way, 433. Is that another 433? Oh, it was. I only got five rounds in here. 434, stock barrel. Look at how loud that thing is. 430. It's five shots. We're gonna end up, what we'll do is take this out and shoot it add some stuff and then I'm gonna put the new barrel on this damn thing. When we're done we're gonna do all the comparison between the old versus new. Kitty get out come here kitty 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 come here kitty 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 yeah he's out of the way. Let's run some shots off with it. Empty this CO2 out. That was a little much. <laughs> Got one in there yet. Load her up. Move in a tiny bit closer. No jamming. Tell you what, I'm gonna switch over to slow motion and I'm gonna put another one of them uh, silly strings up. See what happens. All right, what we're gonna do is put that other barrel on and from what I've, Henry had said, he's just basically loosen this little Allen screw here, pull that barrel out, put that other one in, and we're gonna take a 2000s feeler gauge and put it between here and the, the barrel, slide the barrel down, get it on there and then snug it down, it should be good. But right now, I can't fit a 2000s in there, so if you're watching this, Henry, I don't know. I think it's closer than two, but we're gonna find out. Just loosened up. Not sure how far out to go. But let's see what happens here. Dropped right out. Whoops. Alright, there's the original barrel. And this one we're looking at, as you can see, is quite a bit farther. I do believe that's a 12 inch barrel. See how that's neck down right here? Everything looks good. We're over twice as long of a barrel. Let's see what happens for velocity. Even thicker. I like that. I think he charged 60 for that barrel. Okay, right now I do got the 2000s gauge right down in there. It's all the way on there. We're going to go with that and just see. Oh, look at that guy. Well, let's get her loaded up, get the crony set up, see what happens. All right, lock and load. CO2, got it cocked. That's back, that's back. It's a little bit tight. Ooh, she's loaded. 
Load her up. Five rounds. Oh my god. Five, five, three. Five, five, three. Unreal. 566 feet a second. Five, five, six. 564. Let's shot four. Shot five. Last one was 543. And we're out. Unloaded. Tell you what, now we're going to go out and run that one out. Then let's look at the Karani. Compare it. Pretty awesome. And we're empty. Beautiful. Alright, here's the Karani results. We're going to start out with uh, the original. This was stock and I averaged 326 feet a second and the standard spread was about 8 feet a second. You're looking at foot pounds of energy roughly three and a half but again 326 for an average the best foot per second was 330, 336 and then we uh, got it back from Henry 431 I mean you're talking almost well it is a little over a hundred feet a second faster 326 to 431 about 105 feet average and the best I got out of that was 434 pretty darn good uh, average now we put that 12 inch barrel on at 554.8 average feet per second with one shot do believe running 566 feet a second and just that one shot was over 10 foot pounds of energy out of that that little gun just wicked so the barrel really helps putting it over a hundred feet a second more than a stock barrel and then the mod the hot tune from Henry puts it over a hundred feet a second more than stock plus with it tuned up uh, not once did I have this jam and I thought about running lighter pellets in, but I don't know. I'm sure we could get this thing up over 700 feet a second with alloys, but... So anyways, the results show it. Pretty awesome there. So there you are, the Crosman 600. I think I'm going to leave this barrel on. I want to do some more shooting with it and comparing with some other videos. But eventually I'll probably just go back to the stock barrel, but... Uh, I am going to throw a link in down below for Henry's air guns. I really like his work and not affiliated with him in any way or form. It just, I picked his name off the internet, some of the forums, and gave him a call to get this rebuilt. There's very few, do believe, people in the United States that do a good job rebuilding these. And he done an excellent job. Really liked the gun and I like the quality work he did on this thing. Just a beautifully made gun. And Grosman, if you're listening, you should redo this gun. I'm sure people are going to pay three, four hundred dollars for this gun if you were to remake it. Maybe it's too expensive to remake. I don't know, but wicked. Go ahead and check Henry's link out. And if you end up doing getting work from him, tell me saw my video. So there you go. Till next time, Crosman 600.